y'all. So if you saw the title of this video, you already know what we about to talk about. You already know. The sticky green, y'all. The sticky green, okay? So I didn't write anything down. I'm just going off the top of my head because I get this question a lot in my daily life because people know me. Okay? People know me for doing what I do. And let me address a couple things first. I might even turn my comments. No, I'm not going to turn my comments off. But let me just address a couple things because I don't want to hear it, okay? People are going to be coming to my comments like, oh my God, because if you get your marijuana license, you're not going to be able to get your gun license. Baby girl, baby girl, baby girl. You're not a shooter anyway. Okay? You're not. You're not a shooter. You're not. You're not. And if you don't have your gun license already, baby girl, you wasn't going to get it anyway. People like to say stuff about the gun license, one, because they're ignorant to the legislation that's changing surrounding those laws, and two, people just like to feel superior. People just like to kill other people's dreams and things that other people are excited for. And then people are also stuck in the past stigma of not even realizing that marijuana is actually medicine. Anyway, so hopefully all those people are offended and they finally clicked off. But for those who want to know, how do you get your marijuana? Get my words together. It's a full moon, y'all. I don't know what the hell's going on. How to get your medical marijuana card in Maryland. Boom. So I'm going to leave some links down below so you can go ahead and click, click, click away and get yourself registered. Go ahead and get that started. So the first thing you guys need to know, the first step to getting a medical marijuana card in Maryland, you have to register on the MMCC website. They ask you to take a picture and they're a white background. So something like this, something real, real basic, okay? You, If you can't, then you can go in your bathroom. I done seen people, plenty of people where their pictures, um, for those who don't know, I used to work in a dispensary, so I've seen a lot of different people's pictures on their ID, and a lot of people just take it in the bathroom. So, you know, if you have like a white door in your bathroom, you can just kind of like, and then get the picture and just make sure that it's a good picture. So, here's the thing, there are a bunch of companies that will help you get registered. It's a waste of money. I'm not supposed to tell you that, but I, that's how personally, that's my opinion. I mean, it may be for you, you know, it may be helpful depending on your age, depending on your condition, because some people are actually, you know, Maryland is not a recreational state. Maryland is a medical state, okay? It's not like California or not like D.C., although D.C. is a different territory within the state of Maryland. It's still its own territory. It's got its own rules, period. So within Maryland, it's a medical state. So you have to go to a Maryland medical cannabis commission provider you cannot go see your primary doctor they do not take insurance okay frequently asked questions i'm just saying people ask you this stuff all the time so um you go to the mmcc website i'm going to link it below and you go ahead and get yourself registered like i said you can get help they do charge like a small fee to help you like i, I mean like you can honestly do this on your own period so when you go on the site, you go ahead and make sure you have your picture. I think they ask you for your driver's license and a couple other pieces of information, but you'll be able to see that down below. And then what happens from there is there's a length of time where they inspect your, um, your application that you sent in, your registration that you sent in. And then after that, if you're approved, they send you a number. If you're not approved, they tell you why, and then you have to fix whatever's wrong in your application and resubmit it. Okay, so with me and my personal experience, because I'm not telling y'all to do nothing, like I said, that I ain't already done or that I haven't already had a lot of experience in. So for me, my process took a little bit longer because my picture was messed up the first time. And then I think like um, my address couldn't be verified the second time, which is something minor, just minor stuff like that gets your application sent back. But it's not the end of the world. You fix it, you send it right back in. And... Um, once you get approved, you get your number. So then once you get your MMCC ID patient identification number, then you're able to go to a Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission provider. Now, on the link in the link below on the MMCC website, you'll be able to see a whole list of providers, okay? The provider that I went to, just in case anybody was wondering, her name is Natasha Loving. All right, her facilities were very clean, very awesome. However, on this video, I'm going to recommend either herself or there's another black woman, okay, because I support black business, okay, let's go put it out there. So there's another African-American lady, her name is Patience Odina, I believe she only works in Rockville on Tuesdays or something, something like that, her schedule is a little wonky, you might have to give her a call, be like, hey, what's going on? But one of my friends, um, shout out to Jaden, one of my friends definitely put me on to her, her, um, 
her provider fee is a little bit lower than Miss Loving's, and um, that's it. Like, who wants to pay more for the same thing? So, um, yep, that's it. So once you go to the provider, you go ahead and let them make them aware of your condition. Another thing. So on the MMCC website that once again you'll find in the description bar, there is a list of qualifying conditions. Okay. So. On that list of qualifying conditions, what they normally ask you to do is bring like a pill bottle or something like that. Once you bring your pill bottle, I know um, like they'll be able to see that you've had a regular course of treatment from another doctor and that course of treatment was not working for your particular qualifying condition, okay? So once, they see, once they're able to prove that that course of treatment wasn't effective for you, then they'll be able to start you on a different course of treatment you know they'll be able to assess whatever your qualifying condition is and you know the provider will talk to you and ask you different questions about your health and you know they may even do a, like a short exam most of the time in my experience you know that wasn't necessary we just had a in-depth conversation where we we're able to discuss my condition and what was working and what wasn't and I was able to get approved so how the provider prefer how the provider approves you is they just go ahead and they like they activate your number like I said the number that you get in your email once your registration is complete you give that to the provider and then the provider activates that um, that code and they have you fill out paperwork very basic paperwork make sure you read everything I'm really big on reading everything I like to take a picture of my phone you know something like click click real quick just to make sure that I have a copy for my own self and if you ask them for a copy they should be more than willing to give you a copy I just like to say paper so I like to take pictures of my phone and stuff um, that's uh, basically it so for me I was able to shop the same day okay I didn't have to wait until I got my card I know right now I think it's like you have to order the card in Maryland but that's there's a $50 registration fee when you pay that $50 registration fee that pays for the card and then the provider fee is normally anywhere between okay so if you are a veteran if you're like a veteran you can get discounts I forgot to mention that because you know the vets get special privileges always okay shout out to the vets Thank you for serving, okay? So make sure you do your research, okay? If you know you're a vet or if you have cancer, also, also, shout out to the cancer survivors, y'all are strong, okay? Do your research because you will be able to find providers that give you a specific discount. So the prices vary. Um, sometimes with vets, you can, if you're a veteran, if you're a cancer survivor, you can get a provider fee as low as $25. The max, I believe, is $200 or $250. $250, you're getting ripped off. Just gonna go ahead and put it out there. Unless, the, unless, unless they're helping you with your registration also, okay? Keep that in mind. If they're doing the registration and they're giving you the provider fee, 250 is okay. Because ultimately, total, that should be like your expected cost, 250 I know tax time is coming. A lot of people are like, okay, I'll go ahead and make sure I got my, my thoughts in, in line or whatever. So, um, yep, I just wanted to come on here and do this video and let you guys know the simple steps of how it is to get, um, certified in Maryland I know a lot of people ask me a lot of people want to know a lot of people want to know a lot of people they say you know I feel like I have this condition or I have that condition you know what are the steps I get this question so much in my daily life I'm like you know I'm just gonna make a YouTube video because this is information that a lot of people probably want to know and um, a lot of people just have this 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 idea that it's so much harder than it is my perspective is this okay especially with the whole gun license thing because I have to address it again you ain't busting at nobody Period. You don't even have beep like that. Like, like, what are you so worried about a gun license for? You don't have, keep your mouth when you smoking. You keep your mouth out of stuff. Keep your name out of things. Okay. You don't have no beep. You don't have no reason for no gun. Chai. Okay. So then on top of that, another thing I wanted to address was jobs. So jobs are not allowed to discriminate against you. I know when I first got certified, I wasn't working at the dispensary. I was working at a regular call center, okay? I was working at a regular call center here. I live in Maryland. Um, well, of course, Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission then. But I was working at a regular call center. What I went, I did, what I did was, my tongue, what's wrong with my tongue? I think I'm talking too fast. What I did was I just went to my HR and was to just slid them my certification. Like, you know what? I'm on a new medication. I will be taking my medication before work. I put it basically like that. Like, look, this is what's happening, and this is what's gonna go on. You cannot legally discriminate against me. You can't. So, um, yeah, like, 
That's just basically what it is. And honestly, it's really, it's really none of their business. So, you know, you don't have to disclose your medical condition. You don't have to disclose medical information. You just have to let them know, like, this is, this is allowed. So this is going to happen. And what my job basically told me was, you know, if you have your medical card, just don't share your medicine. Because, I mean, but that's a rule. Like, when you get your card, you have to sign and say you're not going to give it to children. You're not going to give it to strangers. You're not going to be passing medicine on to people that doesn't belong to them. That's the same with any kind of medicine, though. That your prescription is for you. Only for you. Okay? So those are the basic things. I don't know if I forgot anything. I don't think I did. But if I did, leave a comment down below and keep your comments to yourself because don't nobody care. Like, for real. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't really give a shit. If you don't like weed, don't watch this video. I don't even know why you clicked this video and watch this daggone part. If you don't, um, if you don't bust at nobody, stop talking about guns. You're not even a gangster. Cut it out. Okay, like, alright, so that's pretty much it. What else? What else? I think I might do a video on caregivers, but I know my next video about anything about the Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission or the cannabis community is probably going to be about how I got a job in a dispensary because a lot of people ask me that question too. A lot of people want to get in the industry. A lot of people want to know. And I'm going to keep it real with you, okay? I'm going to be talking like we, we best friends. I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to keep it funky. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, all right? And I'm cussing so much through this video because I cuss a lot, okay? But thank you so much for watching. Now, hopefully this was helpful to anybody that's looking to get their mar medical marijuana card or anybody that's, you know, having their doubts because of what people just have a whole bunch to say because they have this stigma in their mind that marijuana is just for recreation and it's not as medicine. We're not here to fight it. I mean, I'm not. I'm not here to change anybody's mind. I'm just here to educate people who want to have that protection. That's another thing I meant to talk about. So if you already know that you carry marijuana more than you carry beef, you're going to need a medical marijuana card more. Because at the end of the day, when the police pull you over, um, first of all, you could get serious jail time for shooting back at a police officer. That gun license isn't going to help you. But what is going to help you was actually like tangible that can get you out of trouble is if you have and I don't have it near me I don't have anything um I don't have any medicine near me right now but if you have your patient label and your patient ID that matches your patient label they have to give you your cannabis back period that's what's gonna help you that's what's gonna keep you safe that's what's gonna keep you out of the eyes of the law and that's what's gonna keep you out of jail so I just want people to be really safe if you know you're already medicating for a position for a particular condition whether it's depression PTSD okay um, cancer anything like that like I said you can check out the qualifying conditions on the website but if you know that you're already self-medicating anyway and you're already carrying marijuana on you it's safe to have that that identification just so that you can go ahead and have your safe pass to carry it because I'd rather see somebody with a medical marijuana card and be able to have their cannabis given back to them and avoid you know getting a fine or being harassed by the police because you have a right to carry it than to have a whole bunch of people walking around acting like fake gangsters not getting their medical marijuana card knowing that they're riding around with lots of weed in their car just oh well, I want to get my gun license okay well you ain't no thug but what you are is medicated it was so to protect yourself in reality in the real realm of the world what you're really gonna use to protect yourself is this is this document that allows you to carry safely okay so peace and blessings to everybody I hope this video finds you well I hope it was helpful and I hope it checks some people that needed to be checked okay so without further ado as always vibrate high and I love you guys bye